Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today, we're going to talk about autosave and how to get it to work while you're editing. Today's question comes from Holly in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, one of my Platinum members. Holly says, I use your autosave feature and it works great, but I noticed that if I'm actively typing for 10 or 15 minutes, the autosave feature never kicks in because the timer only runs when I'm idle. Sometimes I forget to manually hit refresh and I'd like it to save automatically while I'm typing, just like in a Word document. Is there a way to do that without interrupting my work? All right. Yes, there is. We'll get to that in a minute. For everybody else, if you're not sure what she's talking about when it comes to autosave, I did another video about two years ago where I show you how to have Access automatically save your work because Access, literally the redheaded stepchild of the Microsoft Office family does not have an autosave feature. So if you're sitting there and you're typing and you're in the middle of editing a record and you go to work and you don't save it, right? You don't leave the record or close the form or at least hit F5, you, your record doesn't get saved. So what I did was I showed you how to program a timer in this video where every, how, whatever interval you specify, five minutes, 10 minutes, half hour, it'll automatically save your work. And then in the members extended cut, I showed you how to stop the autosave from kicking in if the user is actively editing the record. And that's what Holly's talking about, okay? If you're actively typing and it, and it refreshes on you, it might mess up your work. That's why I usually suggest set this to something like 60 minutes. But Holly told me that she does a lot of very, 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 very long document editing and she saves those documents as text in, no, in long field. I can't talk today in long text fields in her database. And so she could be sitting there typing and typing, you know, for 20 minutes editing a, a long text field. And if there's a problem, if the computer crashes or the power goes out or whatever, you might lose your work. So is there a way to have the autosave still kick in every few minutes, but not lose your work and not get interrupted and not lose your place? Yes, you can. That's what I'm going to show you how to do in today's video. But first up, definitely go watch this video first. This is a developer level video, so is the one today. You'll need some VBA. You'll need to learn the stuff that I cover at least in the beginner video of this. You don't have to be a member to, and, and watch the extended cut. Although it helps if you do sign up and become a member, you, you help support me and you'll learn a lot more stuff that way. But you can just go watch the free video. That's all you really need to know. And you'll also need to know how to determine what the active control is, which I cover in this video. What field is the user currently on? We only want this to run if they're on that notes field, right? Don't interrupt anywhere else. And go watch this video on cell start and cell length, which tells you how to find out where the cursor is inside of a text box. Okay, go watch these three videos. They're on my website, they're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and then come on back. All right, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. And I am just going to make a few modifications here real quick. I'm just gonna get rid of these buttons. We don't need them, get rid of this stuff here and just make this a little bit bigger so we can work with this. Okay, now the code that we built in the other video is relatively straightforward. We come in here, we go to um, events, we slide down here to the timer interval. We set this to an interval however often we want the timer to kick in. Now remember, these are milliseconds, right? Milliseconds, so if you want it to kick in every second, which I don't recommend, you put a thousand in here, every 10 seconds, you'd put it in 10,000. I think for the purposes of class, I'm gonna do 3,000, that's three seconds. That way you can see it's working in the video. Obviously, you probably wanna set that to something more reasonable, you know, like 15 minutes or something like that, All right? Once a minute even would be 60,000, right? Sixty times a thousand, 60,000. And then in the on timer event, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say, just like we did in the other video, it's really simple. If me dot dirty, which means this record is being edited, it has not been saved yet, then some stuff, right? I set the caption, me dot caption equals auto saved and then the current time, right? So the user knows it's been saved. And then me dot dirty, equals false that commits the changes to the table okay and then i put a beep in there just for the you know so you know okay and if we save this save it we're going to close this i'm going to close it close it open her up nothing happens i'll wait three seconds three two one 
Okay, because the record's not dirty yet, but as soon as I make this dirty and I start typing, now it's dirty, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm, oh, see, it kicked in, it backed up, but it, it backed me up to the top of the thing, it interrupted where I was, right? I don't want it to interrupt where I was. Let me undo that if I can, undo, oh, see, it can't undo it either because we committed the change. Okay. So, okay, there we go. What I, what I needed to do is I need to say, okay, remember where the cursor is if I'm in this field. The rest of the fields you don't have, I mean, we can modify this slightly to work in any text box, but for, first let's just focus on the notes field, okay? I can have it say, okay, remember where you are, at what position, and then save that, and then after the refresh, put the cursor back in that spot, okay? All right, so let's go back into our code. I got a little button up here that I put on the quick launch toolbar just to go right back to the Visual Basic Editor. See that? Got a whole separate video on that one. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to put together the stuff, the different Legos that I told you to go watch the other videos. We're going to need to know the active control. We're going to need to know the position of the cursor with cell start, and we're going to need to have to store that information in a variable. Let's, the, let's dim the variable first. So dim, let's call it current position, curpose as a long. If you don't know about dimming variables, go watch this video. Now, what I'm going to say is in here, if this kicks in to run this backup, I'm going to say if, oops, see, oh, did you notice what just happened? I wasn't expecting that, but I like the fact that it ran because I get this question a lot from people. Okay. Notice what just happened. I started typing and this happened. Okay. If you've got a form open in the background with a timer event, that's going to run if this form is in form view and you're gonna get locked out of it. So stop it here, come over here, right click, design, and leave this guy in design mode. Because if this is sitting in form view mode, it's gonna run its timer event. We don't want that if we're in the Visual Basic Editor. Note to Visual Basic team, decouple that somehow. Make it so that it doesn't affect the Visual Basic Editor. That's kind of weird. Put that on the list, Sammy. All right, as I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, if we're on that notes field, so if screen dot active control dot name equals notes, I'm sitting on the notes field, okay, then curpose equals screen dot active control, active, I can't type, active control <laughs> dot cell start. Okay, whatever its cell start cursor position is, that's what I'm putting in my curpose, my temporary variable. Okay, do your thing, set, you know, save it, mark it not dirty, whatever you gotta do. Okay, and now we gotta put it back down here, which is basically the reverse of this. We're gonna copy this again, paste it here, but this way we're gonna flip it. We're gonna say screen.activecontrol.cellstart equals curpose. Okay, so put the cursor back after you save it. Make sense? All right. Save it, back over here, close it, open it. And now I'll come in here, I'll start typing. Typing, typing. Oh, oh look at, look at, oh, oh, look at that. I'm typing, typing. Oh, look, it's saving in the background. Look at, ah ha ha, it's working. Hey. Okay, so it's it's remembering the cursor position, doing the save, and then putting the cursor right back where it was. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, and again, I mean, you could you could do the same thing on the other fields while you're editing too, but these are usually really short fields, and you're not usually sitting in them for 10, 15 minutes, so you don't really need that, but you could do it if you want to. Uh, what you could do is, instead of checking for screen.activecontrol.name, I'll just put this in, in a comment here so that the gold members have it. You could say if screen dot active control dot control type equals ac text box then do whatever okay because ac text box says that the control type that you're in is a text box because this cell start stuff won't work in other field types like a checkbox or a, a button or whatever else you might be sitting on so you only want it to run but i i like it for this i like it for just for my my long text fields. I wouldn't want it in every single field. Okay. And where did I find that AC text box thing? Well, you can Google it or you can go into Code Vault if you're a gold member. 
<laughs> you can find all the control types right in here. There's AC text box right there. There's all the variables. See, lots of stuff in the code vault. All you got to do is come over here and search for control type and you'll find it too. So benefits of membership, not just American Express, benefits of membership here too. Do you like this stuff? You like learning with me? You like programming and VBA and you want to make your access databases better? Want to take it to the next level? Check out my developer lessons. I cover stuff in the order you should learn it. So I'm not like jumping around like, okay, go watch this video, then come on back. Then no, that's just the tech help videos I do that because I don't know who knows what. But in my courses, you start from the beginning, you work your way through it. I know what you know. You know what I know. And everybody knows. Okay? All right. <laughs> But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my access forum. 
We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.